Today's video is about the poem Ode on a Gracian Urn composed by John Keats. This is a stanza by stanza summary of the poem. The poet begins by addressing a Gracian urn which is a vase. It is a symbol of antiquity. In other words, the urn chronicles ancient Greek pastoral life. The poet asks the urn about the legend which is carved on the sides of the urn. The poet tells the urn that it is married to perfect peace and quietness. In other words, the silence that has existed around the urn has never been disturbed over the years. Up to the moment when the urn was found, the peace and stillness around the urn has never been violated. The poet also calls the urn a child of silence and slowly moving time. The urn has lived in quietness for ages. Its existence has been unbroken for centuries. It had been lying hidden from the eyes of the explorer. The poet also calls the urn a sylvan historian because it has chronicled the sylvan or pastoral life. This is because the poet can see a country scene depicted on the side of the vase. Because the urn is a historian of pastoral life, it has been able to express a more beautiful story than the average poets have been able to do so in their poetry. The poet now wonders about the stories that are expressed in the forest leaves carved in the Grecian urn. He wonders if they are the tales of gods or earthly men. Or maybe the vase expresses both types of tales. Additionally, the poet wants to know whether the place depicted on the sides of the urn is temple, which is a beautiful valley in northern Greece, or whether the locality is Arkady, which is a mountainous country and is also an ideal pastoral land in classical poetry. Next, the poet also wants to know the identity of the young maidens carved on the walls of the Grecian urn. These women seem to be making desperate efforts to escape the arms of their lovers. The males are making a mad pursuit of these shy maidens. Also, the poet wants to know what flutes and drums have been depicted on the urn. In short, the Grecian urn depicts a rapturous delight on its walls. The poet is mesmerized by its sheer beauty. In the second stanza, the poet says that the beauty which is heard by the sense of hearing is sweet, but the music which can only be imagined and cannot be heard is sweeter. Therefore, he urges the musical instruments depicted on the urn to carry on playing their soft, silent melodies. He wants those pipes and drums to make music for the mind with songs that are inaudible. Then, the poet addresses the fair young man who is represented on the surface of the urn. The youth is playing upon a pipe and is standing beneath a tree. The poet feels that the young lover is in a blessed position for he will never be able to stop singing his song. Also, the trees around him would never shed their leaves. Although the lover is seen making a bold move in the picture, he will never be able to kiss his beloved. Yet. The lover should not feel sad. His maiden will never vanish from his sight. Also, she will always remain young and beautiful. 
because she is a part of a work of art and not a real woman. The picture of the passionate lover trying to embrace his shy beloved will always remain on the urn. Therefore, the love of the fair youth and the beauty of the maiden will never perish from the face of the earth. In the third stanza, the poet expresses his appreciation for the happiness of the trees depicted on the urn. The trees are happy because they cannot shed their leaves, nor can they take leave of the spring season. The earthly musician becomes tired of his art. However, the musician depicted on the urn is always piping songs. The poet can imagine himself listening to those songs. The lover in the urn is very happy. He is enjoying a love which is always fresh and new. He has the privilege of being in the mood of expecting fruitfulness in love. He is forever excited. The love of this lover never grows old. The lover depicted in the urn gets to experience a love which is far superior to human passions breed by man. Human love is such that it can cause pain and bitterness. But the love of the lover in the urn is ideal because it can never die. Next, the poet notices some folks on the urn. They seem to be leading an animal for sacrifice. The identity of the priest who is about to conduct the ritual is unknown to the poet. The animal is crying at the skies. Some silk of fabric has been draped on its body. Garlands of flowers adorn its neck. The place where the sacrifice is going to be done is also not familiar to the poet. The land is green but the poet cannot understand if the place is a river bank or a seashore. This morning the mountainous terrain is quiet as though its people have vanished. And since this small town has been depicted on the walls of an urn, it is going to remain quiet forever. There will not be any soul to figure out why the street is wearing a deserted look. Nor can the people who have disappeared from this little town depicted on the urn ever return. In the concluding stanza, the poet addresses the urn as a genuine relic of ancient Greek art. It looks beautiful as it stands to be viewed. The urn is decorated with a band of men and maidens. Moreover, it is adorned with forest branches and trodden weeds. The grass depicted in the urn is trampled upon by human feet. Human thought can no longer comprehend the ideas and feelings awakened by the urn. Similarly, human thought cannot understand eternity itself. The urn perplexes human beings. In the same way, infinity perplexes man as well. The marble urn is cold. It holds a pastoral story. When the people of earth become old, the urn will stay. It will console mankind as a friend. The beautiful artwork reflected in the urn will give peace to man when he is gripped by sorrow after sorrow. Well, I have come to the end of this poem here. This is Mehjubin Hussain signing off. I do hope that this video has been useful to you. Let me know what you think about it. And bye for now. See you soon.